I'm gonna be making music till my last days, so. Yeah. Hey, this is Eddie from the band Thrice, and you're watching Project Green Room. It's great. Uh, we've had a crazy year, um, but uh, it's it's good to be you know playing music and finally you know touring on this record. We had a lot of family health problems during the writing of this record, so it was extended a little bit longer than normal, maybe. But um, I know like my dad would have love to have us out like it, it, even when he was sick he was talking about you know when, it, when are you guys working like what are you guys yeah. doing you know stuff like that so you'd be proud of the record then it's mm -hmm. the best rice record of the day I've thank you say. thank you so much I don't think we ever questioned like how like if we were how we were gonna make the record I think that was one of the only things that felt good right. at the time was, you know, going in and writing. Um, I mean, I didn't really elaborate on it before, but my dad had cancer, um, and uh, he ended up passing away in, in the middle of uh, the writing process. So that, I mean, clearly, you know, he took some time off and tried to regroup, but Riley and I wanted to get back in the studio as soon as possible. just he loved the band and that's what he would have wanted us to do and you know Tepe in our touring cycle for beggars he lost his mom and Dustin's dad is dealing with cancer as well and, and the gear getting stolen and everything it, it honestly honestly now like I'm just like you know can it even get much worse you know I guess it always can but um, you know changes like that in your life are definitely like huge for kind of like you know planting a, a new perspective on everything so um, and for me personally you know you know making music and I feel like um, you know it's, it's such a huge part of my life and like what I enjoy and what I I love doing not only for myself but like you know for other people so it's it was really important for us to you know get back into it and I think a lot of it has to do with our intention you know um, there was never you know even when we signed with like major label and stuff there was never an, in, an intention to make it big kind of thing um, and I think sometimes that can put a lot of pressure on a band um, I do think that we were very fortunate especially in that like you know also our t intention being focused on like the music and, and making sure that it's like an artistic thing and, and stuff like that uh, you know it made writing records like have like a almost like a selfish purpose right. like like you know music for yourself. doing it for ourselves right. first and that and that really helps you know if you're worried about what other people are thinking or what other people are saying I think that can really play a huge role in the unraveling of, of like you know what making music is, is all about at least for us you know so um, that being said, like, you know, creating music is, is like an amazing gift that people have allowed us to do like full time. So um, I'm just, you know, grateful. Like I'll, I'll put up with whatever argument we have to have over a song, you know. It's, Messy back lounge. It's, yeah, I mean, like, I feel like the, the struggle is the struggle to like make things work and like, you know, is is part of like what what makes it real and like, good and stuff like that. So.
you know, Tepe is like working overtime basically because there's a lot of times where like Riley or I we'd, we'd be working on parts or you know you'd finish tracking something and then you'd go outside and you know we'd like throw a baseball or something yeah. like that and Tepe would be in there you know like EQing things and you just worked a lot and I think the experience was maybe a little bit less enjoyable for him I think he enjoys you know doing that kind of stuff but I mean when you're doing it that much on top of like the stresses of having to get stuff recorded and then I don't know so that that, that was great for Tepe but also you know we didn't we didn't allow him to do, produce like too much because we, we actually didn't show him the songs until they were pretty much completed. But it's always good to have that, you know, that fifth opinion. We don't have a majority rule in the band, so I'd be like, hey, does that, you know, does that part sound a little dumb to you or is it, is it a little cheesy? I'd be like, yeah, maybe I'll say something. Get you know? side. Yeah, well, I don't do it like secretly, but <laughs> I just don't want to hurt anybody's feeling sometimes it's good to just have like a mediator sometimes but um it was great working on and we you know we formed like a good relationship with them um, so I, I mean it, it was fun we did it real fast I mean we had uh, you know we did it in two weeks normally we're doing stuff ourselves we like kind of relax a bit on scheduling and stuff so it ended up you know we ended up going into it like more prepared than than usual and that's been sometimes the process for for things in the past I think more so on this record because Dustin was gone a lot um, not a lot but you know um, I don't know I mean I think it makes it easier sometimes because like there's like one less like oh wait maybe we should try this or oh wait, wait. but um it was really cool. Like I think some of the songs that came together um, came together a little bit more organic, like less cerebral than than usual. Like you know, I'd walk into the room and nobody would be there yet, and I'd start like messing around, just like riffing on something, and then Riley would come in and start playing a drum beat, and Tepe would maybe or, or whatever, and uh, a few of the songs just developed like no parts that were written beforehand they just happened right then and that was that was cool and it, that doesn't really happen with us a lot because we do so much writing on the side that we're always trying to like throw our ideas into the pool of, of things that are going on now so it was it was cool for a change yeah yeah when we started I mean, I'd go into practice again, you know, we'd be writing something, oh shoot, what was I playing last time? Sometimes we'd take those little, like, mini cassette recorders, you know, the little teeny ones, and, uh, you know, put it in a blanket and put it next to your amp, just so you remember. Um, especially because, like, early on we were trying to do some, or even until we had, like, MP3s and all mm -hmm. that stuff, we were trying to do stuff that was, like, a little mathy and like hard to remember so I, I think um, sometimes some ideas got lost which is sad but now um, I mean I remember when we first started writing like when we first had laptops which we didn't have when um, when we started the band uh, started writing a lot of stuff on reason which is like a programming thing and a bunch of the stuff on Visu was actually like first written just MIDI files and um, for example uh, the piano part in a song called For Miles was like pure MIDI and they were like Tepe try to figure that out <laughs> um, um, yeah but it's changed so much because now you know we have all these ideas that are saved and then when we start writing for a record or when we start com like composing the songs putting them together or compiling the songs together um, we just start sending each other all of the MP3s we have, and sometimes it's like you know, 50 right. riffs or parts or whatever, and then people listen through all of them and, and kind of like pick their favorites, and then we take the, the like majority favorites of the pool and then start throwing those together. So it's it's 
it's crazy though it's I mean it's so common now for everybody but it, it, that's definitely not how it's always been for us the idea originally stemmed from the Wanting to do something special, I think we might have done it for artists in the AM. So I don't know. Um, but you know, we had a lot of old jazz records where there'd be like notes that were written either by like a person in the studio or the musician themselves. And it's such an awesome way to like dig into a record. And I mean, us being musicians, I always love to hear more about picking the person's mind, and I think it helps to know where they were at when they were writing, which, you know, especially us making records that consistently don't sound like the last one, um, I think it helps maybe people understand where our heads are at, whether they like where our heads are at or not, I think it's it's like just a cool way to bring people closer into the process without, you know, I don't know, we're not very, like, vocal, like, super, I don't know, flashy. Good to glamour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're, like, we're not out there talking about ourselves all the time. But, um, it's, it's just a cool way to incorporate, like, ways of getting deeper into what we were thinking. The original album title we were thinking of maybe calling it Blur. Okay. Um, Riley had um, found like a this is going back to the technology thing. Found an app for like smartphone app that was like a a shutter speed slower, so you could take pictures and slow the shutter speed, so you get all these light trails and stuff. And um, he took a bunch of pictures and shared it with us and was like, maybe we can use pictures like this for the album art. Um, and was sharing about how like the, the blurry pictures kind of like um, represented how our lives felt at the moment, just like what is, what is now, what is, you know, how do I make sense of this, like, this is beautiful, this is ugly, you know, and um, that being said, you know, original title, the you know, working title of uh, Yellow Belly was major minor because of the, the switch in the song. Um, and uh, Blur, I mean, it's a band name. We are kind of like, eh, I don't know. And um, Tepe one day was like, maybe we should just call it major minor because you're, you're dealing with like the happy or sad or like shifts in life and I don't know. It seemed kind of mm -hmm. cool. You hadn't really heard anything like that for a record title, so I was like, yeah, it's, it's cool. So we, we, took, we, we rolled with it. Yeah, it was interesting. At first I was like, is he trying to cut corners on writing the lyrics? Because <laughs> uh, I think that was one of the, the last songs he finished lyrically like in the studio oh, wow. um, but no it, it is cool like conceptually it's like pretty crazy like being able to piece a song together from a bunch of lyrical content from other songs I think it's, it's cool awesome.